This is LXBN TV, and I'm Colin O'Keefe. The FDA may soon move towards banning trans fats in all foods, as the agency proposed that partially hydrogenated oils, the source of trans fats, should no longer be generally recognized as safe. Joining me to explain exactly what that means and whether a ban is likely is Claire Mitchell. She is with Stoll Reeves in Seattle, an author on the firm's Food Liability Law Blog. Claire, first, can you explain what this official change means and, and why the FDA has come to conclu the conclusion uh, that trans fats are no longer generally recognized as safe? Sure, absolutely, Colin. And to answer your question, I'll just give a little bit of background about how the FDA um, generally rec uh, regulates food additives. Um, so as, as part of the agency's oversight, the FDA regulates substances that are intended to be a component of food. Um, FDA calls these food additives. And in order for a manufacturer to incorporate a food additive into its product, the company typically has to obtain um, pre-market approval from the FDA before the food additive can be used. And so if the approval is not obtained, then a product containing the additive would be considered to be adulterated, which can't essentially be sold in the U.S. Uh, certain foods, though, um, there, there's an exception to the pre-approval process, and that is called generally recognized as safe by qualified experts. Um, and the acronym for that is GRAS, G-R-A-S. And for years, the FDA has considered partially hydrogenated oils, or PHOs, um, which is the primary dietary source for industrial, industrially produced trans fats, to be grass. Um, the partial hydrogenation process has been in use since the 1930s. It's been widely used in the food industry since the 40s. Um, I, you know, if you go to your grocery store, you can see these hydrogenated oils in everything from cake mixes to margarine to cookies, frozen pizzas, you name it. Um, but what's important is that the status of a food additive as grass can change over time depending on new science, new data that comes out. So um, if there's new information that develops about a substance, and experts no longer agree that the substance is generally recognized as safe, the FDA has the authority essentially to change that determination. And that's exactly what's happening here. Earlier this month when FDA issued its Federal Register notice and um, made this preliminary determination that PHOs will no longer be um, generally recognized as safe, what it was doing is essentially putting those substances back into the food additive category requiring that they have pre-market approval before they're used in foods. Um, and the reason they did this is because in the last 20 or so years there's been new science that's come out to say that um, consumption of PHOs, which is essentially the consumption of tran industrial produced trans fats, has led to increased heart disease. Um, some studies have shown that it's increased the likelihood of diabetes, impaired growth in children. Um, so there are a number of adverse health effects that are associated with the consumption of trans fat, um, meriting that the substance should be taken out of grass status. Um, so essentially, manufacturers, food manufacturers are now going to have to figure out new formulations for their product because if this preliminary determination is finalized by the FDA, any products containing um, trans fat will essentially be adulterated because they contain an additive that will not be pre-approved or legal in the U.S. for sale. Wow, so so based on what you're saying there, this does seem like as big of a deal as it seems. So uh, are we going to see, as you mentioned, the, the phasing out of trans fats in all foods? This this is going to happen then? Mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, I, I have to say that this is a preliminary determination. So there is going to be a 60-day comment period for any stakeholders in the public to comment on this determination and potentially try to change it. But I think just historically, um, Based on the activity we've seen from FDA over the last several years in this area, it's probably likely that we are going to see a phasing out. Um, you know, as early as 1999, the FDA was issuing um, proposed rules about the labeling of trans fats. 
that rule became final in 2003 and was effective in 2006. And since then, trans fats have had to be labeled. Um, and the whole reason behind that was because of the negative health effects that are associated with its consumption. So I think that, you know, just based on the history, based on the science that's coming out, um, I think it's likely that we're going to see a phasing out of this particular ingredient. Um, and and I think based on this history, I think the industry is probably ready for it. We've seen some trends in food businesses um, reformulating their products, um, removing trans fat. In fact, that's become kind of a you know marketing tool to to include advertising on a product saying that this product is trans fat free. So. Um, I, I think we are going to see a change, and um, I think the industry is prepared for it. Very interesting. As prepared as the food industry seems to be, it'll still be fascinating to watch this, this extended process of the phasing out of trans fats in all foods. Uh, once again, that was Claire Mitchell of Stollery's. For more of her insight on this and other matters related to food liability law, be sure to visit foodliabilitylaw.com. And of course, if you're not already watching us here on LXBN, be sure to swing by LXBN.com where you can find more of these video interviews and curated commentary from the LexBlog Network to more than 8,000 members. Thank you for joining me today, Claire. Thank you.